She's the next best thing to a guardian angel, but she's uh, she's me world, George. When I was battling cancer, she was there for me. She was a pillar of strength, and she still is. Um, I do a lot of good things in the house. I mean, I have uh, men's prayer meetings at mine. Mm -hmm. She'll put on the catering for us and clear off. Uh, she really is a darling. She's a great support, and she gets right behind me with all I do, the work I do for Christian Vision for Men, me chaplaincy work in Newcastle. She stands by me. She believes in me, and she's a, she, she really is a blessing. Wow. Well, of course, everything was going fine. You'd met your wife, you'd married, you had a great job, you'd become a Christian, and all of a sudden, whang, back, wallop, your work came crashing down with the diagnosis of cancer. I know you said you, you were angry. At the how, how really angry were you? Um, extremely angry, George. Mm -hmm. I'd always believed in a God of love. And he is a God of love. I'd always believed in a God of miracles. And he is a God of miracles. I'd always believed in a God of healing. And yes, he is a God who heals the sick. Mm -hmm. There are countless miracles of people being healed. But yet, I'd put everything before him. Mm -hmm. And simple faith and childlike faith, I believed, just like that lady who touched them of his garments, I believed he was going to heal me. Mm -hmm. I got my name on prayer lists all over the UK and all over the world. I believe in the power of prayer. I do know that prayer works. It changes lives. And somehow it didn't work the way I was expecting it. Mm -hmm. Three months into the diagnosis, the treatment I was on didn't work. It hadn't worked. And I became extremely angry with God. I became angry. I wouldn't say I was wanting to abandon me faith, George. That would be mm -hmm. sort of a bit silly to suggest that. But I was just so annoyed, so angry with God, uh, almost to the point of suicide. In fact, I did go down that route, as I said. There must have been really, really um, dark times for you then, the fact that you said you went and got drunk. Uh, you, were you trying to drown your sorrows? Well, I wanted to make it easy. I mean, you know, the drink was to numb it. And to make it easy for when I decide for, to make the suicide easy, I didn't want to feel it. I didn't want to feel what I was going to do. Um, I guess I was sort of emotionally wrecked at the time. Mm -hmm. Now you said your wife and family were braying on the door. Can you explain to people who are not from Newcastle what braying on the door is, please? Yes. Um, I try to resist talking to Jordi tonight, but there, <laughs> there we go. Yes, as I walked into the garage with the rope, clearly my wife and daughters had spotted me. And they came to the garage and they were banging frantically on the garage door, mm -hmm. banging frantically, appealing for me to come out, begging me not to do it, begging me not to take my life, threatening to call the police. And you know, when I said to you, George, that I heard the voice of God that mm -hmm. night, I heard the voice of God through my two daughters and wife. Wow. Excellent. So you, did it take you long to recover from that particular position in your mind? How long did it take you to recover from that? Well, as I say, I went to bed that night and I slept on it. And the next day I repented. I asked God to forgive me. I asked God to forgive me for doubting him. I asked God to forgive me for what I was about to do because suicide isn't the right way. You know, our times are in God's hand. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this. If God wants to take me home tonight, so be it. I'm not afraid of death and I'm not afraid of cancer because I know who I am and I know where I'm going. Excellent. Now, when you sat down with the specialist out the three months, did they give you a time scale? I say, look, Michael, you've got so many years or so many months. No, they, they can't do, they can't give a time, uh, they can't give a prog an exact prognosis with the cancer I have, George, mm -hmm. because every patient is different. Okay. So what I do know is I do have stage four cancer. I haven't been cured. And as I said before, my faith has taught me to just take one day at a time, to rejoice each morning and to thank God for each day that he blesses me with. Mm -hmm. Now, we were talking before the meeting, actually, and uh, the question came up was, how do you reconcile the fact that you, you've prayed for people to be healed for cancer tonight? 
How do you reconcile the fact that you've prayed but yet God hasn't healed you? How do you reconcile that? Well, that's a million dollar question because I know, I mean, I'm not God. We do know that God heals the sick. And I think God chooses different paths for people, different experiences. My experience has taught me to reach out and to support other people who have cancer. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have this cancer, George, I wouldn't be able to empathize empathize with some of the people I support through my role as a chaplain. So I can get alongside people and not just sympathize with them, but to share my experience with them. Now, you mentioned the fact that you're a chaplain. I was going to ask you about that, actually. Tell us a little bit about what you actually do as a chaplain in Newcastle. How does that work? Yes, I'm a city centre chaplain based at, New- at St Andrew's Church in Newcastle. Um, I've served there since 2008. And as a chaplain, what we do is we go into various work sites in the city centre, uh, Eldon Square, for example, anywhere where people work. And we'll go there by invitation. And it's our job as chaplains to get in there and to support people at work who have problems. Quite often, people go to work who have problems and they can't leave their problems at home. Mm -hmm. They take their problems to work with them. So it's our job to step in and to give some listening support. And quite often what we do is we signpost people to Samaritans, to bereavement counsellors, and to other networks who can support them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think... The chaplaincy work, George, is a, is a ministry which I absolutely love doing. It's a, it's, it's a, an opportunity to go into the workplace and to share God's love with people, to let people know that we care, to let people know that there is someone there who they can turn to. And I think it's a great ministry. It's a ministry which I absolutely love doing. And is, is there opportunity, of course, with the chaplaincy to share the gospel or is it mainly social? Well, what we're told, I mean, obviously, we've got all this. to respect other religions and faiths we live in a multi-faith society mm-hmm. although i go out there and represent jesus and uh, i can only share my faith if it's requested i can't impose my faith on others if someone wants prayer i'm happy to pray with them but i can't offer that it has to be requested excellent but uh, you also have a vision of course for uh, for men what is exactly the vision for men that you have well as a rep of Christian Vision for Men, our vision is to win a million men for the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Now, I've had the pleasure, George, of uh, being in... What we do in Gator is once a month, we have a men's curry night. It's a very simple meeting we have. And, and quite often, we bring, we'll bring source speakers to come along. We meet in a Tilly's own pub. Um, we have a speaker who will maybe share his testimony. And we invite some mates along. Now, let me tell you this. I was in a meeting one night... And there was 46 fellas turned out. And six of those guys weren't Christians. 
And they left that night as Christians. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, of course, you said uh, you're, you've, you've had the cancer now for nine years. What do you think, I know as I might have said, I don't know how to ask this question, what do you think the future holds for you? Well, only God knows that. I mean, God knows everything. You know, God holds the universe in his hands. You know, his ways aren't ours. But what I will say, George, is as long as I have breath, as long as my heart beats, it beats for Jesus because I love Jesus more now than I've ever done before. And I just take one day at a time. I don't have any fear of cancer. I'm repeating myself here. I don't have any fear of death. I simply take one day at a time. And that's the notion I live on. Excellent. Well, it's been fantastic speaking to you, but I always ask this question of the people who come on here to give their stories. I mean, you've made many decisions in your life, uh, but uh, in that time, what was the best decision you ever made? Well, I need to be careful here. I'd better turn the voice down because my wife's sitting next door. <laughs> I should say it was marrying my wife, Maria. That was probably the second best decision. But... Uh, Becoming a follower of Christ because Jesus Christ is my all. He's given me hope. Amen. You'll have to let me know when the curry night's on, Mike, because I do like a bit of curry myself. <laughs> it's been It'll fantastic. be a pleasure to pay for your curry, George. <laughs> fantastic speaking to you. And with that, I'm just going to hand back to uh, Alan again. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much, George. And thank you, Michael, for answering those questions. Well, You've heard Michael's story, and we appreciate, Michael, what you shared. And I'm sure after this, there'll be people praying for you. But the wonderful thing is, when you have Jesus, when this life is over, whatever it is, if you have Jesus, you're going to have eternal life with him. This is the wonderful thing. Uh, in this, on earth here, we, it's just temporary. It's just a t we're just passing through this world. And the best is yet to come for, for those who, who know Jesus. The best is yet to come for Michael. But I, I do believe that God is a healer. And I'd like to pray for Michael right now. Father, I bring Michael before you. He's your child. He belongs to you. And Father, I know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We've had, heard that tonight. Jesus, you are still the healer. You're still the miracle worker. Lord, I thank you that the name of Jesus is greater than any other name that is named amongst men. That Jesus, your name is greater than the name of cancer. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, that cancer will be gone from Michael's body. That, Lord, you'll do a miracle for him, Lord. And even the doctors will be amazed at the change in him, Lord. We just pray for him now, Lord, and pray your hand will be upon him. Thank you, Lord, for the, the strength you've given him to do the work he's doing in chaplaincy and CVM, Lord. I pray you'll continue to bless him and use him, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank so, you, Alan. Bless you, Michael. So tonight, if you need help, need prayer, please contact us on our hotline, plus 44-794-355-0287. You can text, you can WhatsApp, or you can phone that number. Also, you can go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. And there, as I said, there's lots of information you can find out about the work that we're doing. You can watch all the stories from previous Mondays uh, for the last two years. Also, we have uh, stories going out every lunchtime, Life Stories TV. You can watch those. A lot of wonderful testimonies going out. And can I invite you to join us again next Monday at 8 o'clock for another Life Story. This time, we're going to Russia for a story. This next Monday will be Dmitry Polyakov. Dmitry lives in uh, St. Petersburg, which was Kaliningrad at one time. From uh, early childhood, he was interested in art, and he followed that career in art. But he has a story to tell. Of one day, or he met a person in the city of five million people three times in three different locations. He said it was a heavenly coincidence and how he was given the Gideon's Bible and he sought out the largest dictionary he could find because the Bible was in English and then he couldn't understand English. But now he probably would be sharing his testimony in English. So please join us again 
next Monday to hear the story of Dmitry Polyakov. So thank you for being with us. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, George. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, John. Thank you, Gintz, for interpreting too. We just wish you God's blessing, all of you. May you know God's peace, God's love, God's joy. May you walk with him and may you have the experience of eternal life. God bless you all. Look forward to seeing you. Victor Lopez, the director of Victory Outreach Men Home in Fallbrook, California. Victor, go ahead and share your testimony. Yeah, hi, my name is Victor Lopez. Um, first of all, I want to thank God for my salvation. Um, seven years ago, I used to find myself lost in drugs, alcohol, and gangs. Lost my family due to the lifestyle that I used to live before. You know, lost my, my wife, lost my kids. Um, you know, I hurt my wife for so many years that she didn't she didn't believe me no more that I could change. But it was until seven years ago that I met Christ in a recovery home called Victory Outreach Men's Home Vista. And it's right there where, where, where I realized that, that I wasn't made just to be a drug addict or a gang member, but I knew that God had a purpose for my life. And I believed it because... You know, uh, many things have passed in my life that, that that I know I shouldn't be here, but it was because of God's mercy and grace that I'm still alive. And in that recovery home, I was able to get set free from the drug addiction, the chains of of gains, uh, chains of of bitterness, of of hate, of remorse, of guilt. But after believing in, in God and giving my life to Christ, I was able to restore my, my, my matrimony. I was able to restore my kids. I was able to be back with my family after a year being in that recovery home. And I truly believe that the only answer for all our problems, for any situation that we're going through, is Jesus Christ. I believe that, 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 that he's the only way. There's no other way other than Jesus Christ for our lives. And I believe also that, that if it wasn't for him, where would I be? I would be in a prison cell. I would be dead. I would be in a hot mental hospital because the way I was going, I was surely going to be going to one of those three places. But it's because of his grace and love and mercy that I'm still standing here. Now I'm serving the Lord together with my family, my wife, my kids in the men's home, helping other men able to change their life through Christ able to restore their families, their, their, their loved ones, maybe those that they hurt, but it's all, it's all through Christ that they're able to do that. And I thank God because I got seven years that I haven't got back, seven years that I haven't tasted any alcohol, drugs, anything that I used to do because the word of God says, for whoever is in Christ, he is a new creation. All old things are past. Everything is made new. And I thank God because I don't live in the past no more. I live for what God has for me in the future. And I just want to encourage you that the only answer and the only way is Jesus Christ. For any situation that you're going through, any problem, or maybe you're going through the same thing, Christ is the answer. God bless you. 
लाइफ स्टोरीज लाइफ स्टोरीज लाइफ